Hi, everybody. Welcome to Below the Monnet. I'm Michael Caruso, and joining Dave and Andrew on the couch is none other than the king of Pukekohe, the man that drove the lap of gods at Bathurst. That's you. The four-time Bathurst winner, Greg Murphy. You could have done a better introduction. Actually, Sorry. Was that not good hey enough? brother. Thanks for coming on. It's I a pleasure said, to be here. I, I, listen, I have, as you know, and I was honest about it, I said I, I couldn't wait to come on the show. No, you thought you I were. was kidding. Yeah, at first <laughs> I, I thought he was having me on. <laughs> why, would he do, why would he donate Look, his I'm, I'm just busy. I got, I got things going on. I got, I got people, my people, talking to other people's people. And, and it's just a busy people? time. Speaking hey? of people talking to people, um, I have your phone number and you responded to me. But before we came in here, Old no, David this, Reynolds over no, here no, literally wrong. burnt you to a crisp. <laughs> he just <laughs> didn't even have your number. How, what's going he on? He deleted No, then he admitted he deleted it. <laughs> you got to hear my side of the story. I, I, had, an old, I had an old um, email address and account that I deleted, and it was obviously synced with a lot of contacts and deleted no, like the old a lot sync, of, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Because I rang you like a few weeks ago, and then deleted, and then deleted it. my number. <laughs> he obviously yeah. didn't like that conversation. <laughs> yeah. but didn't yeah. like what I had to say about him. <laughs> See you, mate. Mm. <laughs> uh, mate, well. You just said that you've been busy. Um, obviously, you've stopped racing since 2014, but you still do a lot of driving. I mean, racing in supercars level. Mm. You do a lot of driving. Otherwise, we're just talking off air about how, you know, you drove at uh, Taylor Bend <laughs> in yeah. the practice session. A lot of driving. <laughs> Heaps of driving. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool that you get called upon to come in and, and step in and drive the cars. Yeah, it's mean, fu- it is funny because, you know, um, I haven't been, I haven't done a lot of competition. Certainly haven't driven a supercar in anger for quite some time. And I think the last time I drove it, I wasn't very angry. I was actually pretty keen to get out of it. Um, but you know, so he, he and these cars, these cars, seriously, it doesn't matter how many laps you did beforehand. Stepping back in, and and you've probably got a little bit of that sort of going on at the moment with limited laps this year, and how yep. much of a difference, even in what are we? When was the last time? 10 months, 11 months since you were full time. You know, the change is significant. So, And when I get the chance to do it, the, can you imagine Mark Scaife, Neil Crompton, Mark Larkham, how much to grief you. I'd get <laughs> yeah. if I put a wheel off? <laughs> if I happen to rotate at all, do anything that was, I mean, they're watching like hawks. They're wanting something Same bad to, to go happen, wrong. Yeah. Right? Well, it would have been awesome <clears throat> if you just trout at the fence, though. Wouldn't it? It would have been <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It would have made yeah. like the cool, like, it would have been cool. good TV. Yeah. Yeah. It, would, yeah. it would not it be. Been. It would not be. No. Well, not for you. No. But, like, well, then what's the point? Oh, for, oh, for you. Yes, I so, so there's more pressure now. So back when you were, you know, leading race teams, you know, that was no pressure, but no. worrying about Scafey hanging some shit on you exactly. stick it in the wall. That's exactly where the pressure right. Comes from. Exactly right. And I, and, I, and I I can see it. I can see it every time that I come back and nothing's happened. He's disappointed, you know? So well, this is your opportunity to hang some shit on him. What about that photo of Scafey and Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what came over him? Seriously, what came over him? <laughs> who asked who for the photo? Yeah, that's that's, what I yeah, that's really true. Want to know. That's, that's, that is that true. That is what I want to know. We'll get who to the bottom of that this who weekend. Who initiated that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I reckon he would have sent it to his daughter. That would have been his excuse. Yeah, well, that's probably fair, but she wouldn't have known who Lindsay Lohan was. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, I, don't, I think uh, the generation or so below us, and you're in a different generation to me, um, I don't know if they would know who she is. What generation am I? <clears throat> Decade, Dave. What are you, actually? Z? X, Y. I think you. I think you're, you're alone. You're actually on, yeah, <laughs> yeah. my own generation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're alone. Now, Murph, we know you do this stuff in the media. We see you every weekend, but but what else are you getting up to? I mean, you're obviously moved from Melbourne back yep. over to New Zealand, the Kiwi land. That's um, right. What are you What are you doing? Neighbours with Greg Rust. That's right, Greg Rust. Yeah, yeah, Rusty, Rusty, and I, who we, we've known each other for years, but uh, basically, I can see his bedroom window. Is that across the valley, there's a couple of valleys in between, in, in between us. But I have an eye line direct with his his bedroom window at his <laughs> so place. Have you got the uh, telescope? I went and bought a telescope, so I can I see what I can see what's going on. And that's that's a fact. We can like, we can see each other's houses from where we that's are, awesome. and, and there's like a kilometre or something between us. So so yes, he he lives there. But um, yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty lucky, mate, to be honest, to have uh, stepped out, moved back to New Zealand, um, and have this opportunity and the job that I have working in Supercut Land, I, I find myself in a pretty pretty amazing position. I feel really honoured to have it because it's timing, isn't it? It's yep. about uh, being in the right place at the right time and, and I think I was in the right place at the right time for that because uh, between you and me, 
uh, you guys and me, just keep this to yourselves. I, I didn't I didn't like the co-driver thing. I didn't find a, a rhythm there. It was a bit of a struggle. Uh, I think HRT at the time was also having a bit of a struggle, but um, you know, I just I didn't fall into that that zone very well at all. And I mean, I was whatever I was, forty something at the time, and I did not enjoy not being in control or being being um, the lead driver. And and I, it also then made me think about all the time I'd put pressure on co-drivers. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and you know, and you like, felt bad twenty years later. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, oh, it was oh, like. Well, you know, just get on with it. You're right. Just yeah, do yeah. your job, and and that's probably the way they, uh, you know, HRT at the end there were looking at me, but I wasn't comfortable with it. So, to make that decision um, to not drive anymore, and then fall into a, a situation with um, you know Fox coming on board with the broadcasting, and then and, and find a role, I, I I feel like I'm pretty lucky. On top of that, uh, you know, travel backwards and forwards between Australia and New Zealand, uh, which is something I always did anyway. I was always heading off to New Zealand when I was living in Melbourne, but I do some stuff for Sky over there, which is the Fox equivalent in New Zealand, and have a little TV show, which um, uh, Dave was actually on. Uh, yeah, you were on. Um, we 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 yeah, used. You don't that, even um, know when you're on TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We yeah. used we used that thing you did. Uh, we did last year at Pukekohe with the rally car. We oh, put that yeah, on dude, there. that was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I, I do some stuff it. with them, do a TV show, motorsport show over there, and uh, still got you know plenty going on with um, other other corporates and things that I had relationships before, and, and so that maintains. Do a heap of road safety stuff these days. Man after my own heart here. The start um, one. So I'm really busy with that. That takes up a, a huge right. amount of time lobbying with uh, a little bit of government stuff as well, trying to, to get some change when it comes to young drivers and licensing and all that kind of stuff to to uh, save some lives. So um, there's not, not a dull moment, to be honest. Are you still doing any of the rallying stuff? No, the unfortunately, uh, the car's parked up. Uh, I haven't been able to get rid of it. Haven't been able to tried sell to sell it. it to me, actually. Yeah, I tried to sell it him a couple of times. Because <laughs> he actually did pretty well. Yeah. Um, I blew, loved it. It was the best <clears> day of my life. Blew me away. Him and GT actually just took to it like duck to water. Yeah. Um, albeit, there wasn't many trees or stuff around. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. a pretty open yeah, it's pad, a bit easier. So it's yeah. a bit easier. Um, but well, no, you showed us what to do first, and then yeah. monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, but you, yeah, monkey, well, monkey yeah, you did. You were a complete monkey because you, <laughs> you actually surprised me big time, which I shouldn't have been surprised because, you know, you recently talented but um yeah so that's parked up uh it's just a time thing you know yeah. it's also rallying um which is the toughest form of sport i think oh, i've so ever hard. envisaged uh, ever been a part of really absolutely because the, the there's so many different parts to it that you've got to actually take in so you, you know obviously the note someone talking to you through a headset um you know every few seconds giving you instructions on what's coming up next and the roads are never the same no matter if you go over them twice or yeah. three times they change every single time and obviously when you do it the second time you want to try go faster mm. so you do everything a bit quicker and you, you try a bit harder um but it, it was just a crazy sport I, I never got tired of driving the car but oh, cool. the fact of it was it is so time consuming massively time consuming and and you know i was organizing pretty much everything and the car was going all over the place to get things done to it because i wasn't able to do that and a lot of uh, friends were doing a lot of work but the organization of it um and not being able to do enough spend enough time in the car meant that i was sort of going you know well where am i going to go with it you know am i am i going to continue and improve especially with the amount of rallying i'm doing so um i just decided to give it away and i think uh, also the uh, my good wife um, probably was looking at me a bit sideways <laughs> going, you know oh, what, mate. there's two things here. And uh, first up, uh, it might have been around the other way, but first up um, is the safety side of it because it's, yeah. you know, it's reasonably tight. And then the second time, the second part of it is she pays all the invoices, so she was looking at it. <laughs> but it could have been the invoices first and then my safety second. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Probably that was the one. Yeah. It, it, so you, you were running the team. Have you ever thought, I mean, now that you've finished that side of it, have you ever thought to own a supercar team and run one? Like, I mean, I did that. You did that, remember? Yeah, but partially. Green Murphy you know, Racing. Yeah. Full on, like now. No. Start no. one up. <clears throat> no, absolutely not. Absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Just shut it right down. No, yeah. Well, it, yeah. the license is going cheap, though. There are licenses going cheap. Um, I think there'd be a lot more people that want to get involved if we could uh, get rid of some of the cost out of this, mm. this sport. And then we know, oh, we, we, yeah. everyone agrees on it. We just we talk about it's it hard, all yeah. the time, but, <laughs> it never but, happens. but it's not happening fast enough. And um, you know, and that's that's the bit that uh, is is um, disappointing. I mean, with Tasman, we shut that down at the end of two thousand and nine. It's ten years ago yeah. that we shut yeah. that down. Far out. Has yeah. it been that long? Already? I know it's staggering. It absolutely is staggering to understand. Um, you know, uh, the timeline around that, and and that ran for what was it? I was there for three years, and it was running. I think two or three before that, <clears throat> and we. We just were never able to get on top of it. We made some mistakes along the way. You know, we decided to try and be the masters of our own destiny. You know, we tried to be our own manufacturer. We yeah, tried build to our own build our own cars, engines. do our own yeah, engines, all that so stuff. And, and, and that was the number one fail. 
fail point. We should have just been a customer yeah. from from everybody, you know, everybody else like so many car people are now. We should have gone down that path rather than trying to control everything ourselves. But, but back then, there wasn't many customer teams, was there? Everyone no. was trying no. to do it themselves yeah. for some reason. Yep. Yep. I don't know why. Um, but you, you could obviously go and buy the stuff. There yeah. was there was availability. It was pretty expensive, though, to buy back in the day. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? Um, but, you know, Relative. But we... We just, you know, we tried to do that, and, and, and the commercial side of it was really, really difficult. And there wasn't, there wasn't that, um, you know, single person behind it with a whole lot of money that was just prepared to keep tipping it in as well to keep yep. it going. And that, and that, you know, we made the right decision at the right time to, to pull the, the plug. Mm. The so Murph, Murph Burger and the Murph Pies weren't selling well. They were gone by that stage. Oh, were they? <laughs> oh no, they weren't. Yeah. No, no, the pie was still around. Yeah, the pie. The pie's, pie. The pie's yeah, pie. Pie. Hey. That wasn't there. Yeah, yeah no. I've had one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The pies are <laughs> still, still going. Pie. The pies are still going. Yeah. Um, when you say it's costing too much, and we're not reducing that. How much do you think until we can start enticing new owners to come in the category? Well, you know, if you're based on some of the numbers that uh, are thrown around the place, you know, I think, um, you know. You, a number around three million per car is something that gets bandied around a fair bit. There's obviously some running less, there's some running a lot more, but you know to do it probably reasonably well and and not be too stressed, you're going to have to have something like that number. And I think you probably got to slice a third of it, don't you? I reckon. Um, obviously, Dave's Even wages more. are yeah. a big problem for Decade, Dave. for for that team um, for Erebus. I mean, they just uh, ten million be, dollar man. Well, I don't know a, how it's gone. That so would quiet. be a big problem to deal with on a daily basis. But that's a ten year deal, so inflation will take care of that. He'll be the lowest paid bloke on the grid in ten years. <laughs> Dude, I'm getting the same money in. every year. You, you yeah. should have told me that. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I they brought that up to him. I said, actually you borrowed get, the money. Yeah, so you're getting, paid, you're getting yeah. paid the same every year? Yep. Yeah. You know how inflation works, don't you, mate? Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, no. I never thought about that. <laughs> Betty's yeah. just like, you yeah. beauty. You yeah, smart cookie. Smart cookie. <laughs> I'm uh, usually yeah. really good at numbers, and that yeah. just ruined my life. <laughs> ruined the next 10 years of my life, thanks. Sorry, mate. Yeah, so I think, you know, that's what that's what I think everyone knows that needs to happen. I think we need, personally, I believe we need more cars in the field. and Definitely. You know, we need to create more options for, for drivers to not have to front up with a, a whole lot of cash to get a drive. And we need to have blokes that should be in there that aren't in there, um, you know, being able to be employed, mm. a la Michael Caruso, you know, and, and a bunch of others as well. So, you I, know, I, I could probably solve it. Just bring back cigarette sponsorship. And alcohol. <laughs> well, but just, yeah. How good is that? You were part of those days, weren't you? You were part, well. Uh, was I was, this? yeah. I was yeah. around with the old. Pack leader, yeah, the, pack, the old pack leader, yeah. pack leader days, yeah. yeah that would have been sick. Yeah, well, there, been, there, there was a lot of sick people, <laughs> yeah. and they continue like, to be sick now for the same reason. Yeah, yeah, that's controversial, there, Dave. I think it's it? controversial. Yeah, well, it's just well, my that's opinion. Unlike mm. Dave, yeah, Un- I like, unlike you. I like saying what I think and yeah. what, I, what I have thought. <laughs> you can on get occasion a, get vaping sponsor or something. Well, that's, they say that's the next biggest thing. It's gonna, it's gonna mm. be like vaping. And then they'll realise how long and that that's um, doing just as much damage, probably. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that Bitcoin and mer- medical marijuana is gonna like. Bitcoin sponsorship up the side well, of the race car. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know who you've been talking to. It's <laughs> a Ryan Walkinshaw job going yeah. on right there. <laughs> Bitcoin's number he's one. Yeah, on he's it. he's right into it. Esports going to take over like real sports. Yeah. No, that's just not right. That's not right. No, not do, you really. ever, do you ever sit back and, and pinch yourself? I mean, you've had a very successful <laughs> career. <laughs> no. Jokes aside. He was the type of person to do that. No, I know. Yeah. But did you, when, you know, when it all, when you sort of got to a point, right, I, I'm, you know, r- not running full time or competitively anymore. Did you ever just think, you know what, I've actually, you know, from what, when you were a life. kid, you want to be a race car driver, all those things that you sit back and go, shit, I actually did it pretty good. I, like I come out of it. I you feel, know, really I well. feel uh, without doubt that, um, you know, why did it happen? Why did, you know, it is, again, it's about making the most of opportunities, right? And I happened to find that there was some, some opportunities that, that I, you know, did make the most of. And, and, and that's, that doesn't mean that it's gonna, you're going to be successful or it's gonna, you're going to get through the cracks. But we did make some decisions. Oh, and I say we, it was Kev and I, um, who was, you know, so significant in, in, in my early days and, and finding, you know, finding ways to, to get things done and get to racetracks and that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, it you do, but it becomes so normal, right? And there were so many parts of it late in the in your career where, you know, it just wasn't going the way that you wanted to, wanted it to yeah, be. It does become so normal, hey? It, it normalises, and that's and that shouldn't be seen as as us, you know, sounding like wankers. But it's it, it's it's a job, right? Yeah, yeah it is. It, yeah. It, it is a job, and and it becomes a really really tricky. 
and you know what I'm talking about. Tricky job in, in a situation where you know, you, you're often thinking about where's it going to go next and, and the, the stress of, of trying to deal yeah. with it is, is incredibly tough. And I don't think that's recognised by, by obviously a lot of people because you know, it's not about just making up numbers, is it, boys? Nah. You know, it's not <laughs> about just being there making up numbers. That's not good enough, especially nah. when you've had success, right? When yep. you've had success. That's true, yeah. Um, so you know, it's interesting you talk like that and, and I am, I'm um, truly feel humbled uh, by, you know, still today, you know, people who want to come up and talk about things that you've done. And, and that's that's amazing. But the thing that uh, will never change is the reason we were doing it, we do it in the first place, yeah. is because we're selfish. And <laughs> it's it we have to be. Because you, you do it for yourself. And, yeah, and you're not true, doing yeah. it for anything else. Anybody else, you're doing it for you primarily, right? And then yep. from that comes everything else because it all feeds off how you drive a race car and how successful you are from that all. So it's um, you do have to reflect. And I do I do reflect. And I certainly reflect more now. Yeah. Yep. Um, from the from the position that I'm in, walking up and down the pit lane, watching all you blokes and watching everyone else as well, going about their business and watching... Uh, the struggles. <laughs> the struggles. Well, the pain. <laughs> yes. It, it's the pain on people's faces. Yeah. Because you'd be able to see it before oh, anyone else. It. You know, when you, and I found when this year's stepping back, you can nearly, you can see what's going on and it feels like there's this barrier around everyone in pit lane but you feel like you can see it before they do because you've sort of... Well, they're so, you're so engrossed, right, sense. in what you're doing within within the walls between you and the next team, right? You're yep. so engrossed, and, and, and that's what you do. You have to be. You're not going to be looking and keeping an eye on what everyone else is no. doing. You're focused on what you're doing. You'd like to know what they're doing, but you, obviously you, you, you can't. So you get very engrossed and focused on what you're doing, which you have to. And But next door there's all the different challenges that they're having. And next door, there's all the different challenges. And regardless if someone's going out every race and dominating and doing, you know, what McLaughlin's doing or doing what Red Bull did at, at the Gold Coast, uh, you know, last last week, they're still got their challenges, right? Because they're still trying to do yeah. their thing. They're just, you know, they're just used to a different level you know, constantly. And, and for me, watching all that going on is really interesting. And watching what happened at Bathurst was just mind blowing, and talking to people and seeing people's reactions and all that kind of stuff was just off scale because it was, wasn't it? because you, I'm in a very fortunate position to be able to see all that yeah. and Larco and you know the two of us just we walk up and down sometimes shaking our heads yeah. at what's going on like it's it's just it is really bizarre and so my perspective on it all is, is I'm 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 very fortunate to be in that that role where you know I've got. I think I've got pretty good trust in the lane. You yeah. know, everyone. Yeah, I try to yeah. treat everyone the same. I try to, you know, I'm not, I'm not you can walk biased. Up and have a I'm not trying. To, yeah, I'm not trying to. Yeah, you, you haven't know. got an agenda. No, no agenda. And because because I, I'm I'm there for the good of the sport. I want the sport to be successful. I want people to to engage with it. And and so when I see what happened at Bathurst and all that kind of stuff, I look at it from a point of view is that there is going to be so many eyeballs watching yeah. this, and it's yep. exciting, and and we're going to be talk, and people talking about it, regardless if they're throwing rocks or not, or they they're pro that or or, or against that. They're talking about supercars, and that's that's a that's a and that's what that's we awesome. want. That's what we want. But it's um it's the it's the pain on people's faces, I, and that's the bit I don't miss because I I know I know <laughs> if I was <laughs> like in racing, ninety five percent of the time you're disappointed. You're mate. in pain. You're, yeah. Ninety five percent of the time yeah. you're disappointed with your result, regardless if you're second, yeah. first. Yeah, like and so and and so that's my reminder. And when I get asked on a <laughs> daily basis, pretty much, oh, do you do miss it? it? Yeah, no. yeah. I go. I mean, you know what? I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. And you're on, you're honest about that as well. Absolutely, have yeah. to be. You know, but I'm forty. What am I? Forty seven. So you you're know, forty seven. Yeah. In reality, my my day would have been done by now anyway. Even if I managed to continue on, you know, um, it would it would have stopped by now, and that's yeah. that's fair enough. Does it make it harder to barrel into a garage and with a microphone and ask people stuff when you can empathise on Abs- such a personal level of 100%. what they must be feeling like? Because I can't do that when I go and interview. You know, I can. Imagine what it's like, but I can't. And, and, I don't know. For and sure. what is awesome about the people that I work with that are sitting in the trucks doing all the real hard work is that you know they give me that little bit of leeway to yeah. you know to decide when when's the right, the right time, time yeah. because you, you know exactly what's going yeah. on, and and you know you've got to give people time. Uh, you know, although you know we still do have to try and yeah. chase the story, yeah. and that's and that's what makes what supercars is. And the people that watch it and tell us what an amazing coverage it is, that's what gives us the edge because we do have such good access. Mm-hmm. And people still respect, um, even though they know that we've got to come and do a job, and, and 99% of the time that's respected yep. by all you guys, all the drivers in the field. And that is that 
that um, that real amazing synergy and connection that we've all got there that that allows us to do it because you know the, the coverage we offer and the connection to you guys on you know two minutes before a race before you roll off on a on a on a yeah. warm up lap yeah. and you know when you hey, jump mate, out of a how car how you gonna pass the car in front of you <laughs> yeah. Yeah, are, are you, you going to get a good start? Yeah, yeah. are you going to get all a good start? What do you think about? You talk about all, yeah, it's all yeah, the good stuff. Yeah, like on the grid, it's yeah. all. So it's it's it's, it's that's all, that's, yeah. that's what makes it so special. And and, and I and I, I realise what uh, you know what a sort of seriously honoured position I am in that respect to do that. That's right. That's I think that's very well put. Mm. It's hard though to go from like racing to commentating about, isn't it? Or yeah, semi journo yeah, approach. Yeah, it, it is. But I think again, um, we've we've generated in the pit lane too the drivers that have been there quite a long time and you're doing a bit of you know obviously you guys are doing this but you're doing other bits and pieces with 10 this is amateur bro well <laughs> there's, there's like four cameras <laughs> yeah I know but, like, and, yeah, but there, is a, there is no one standing behind any of them either but anyway yeah. um, but I think our sport here because we've actually had to learn pretty fast and we actually have to put a lot of effort into uh, representing ourselves and our teams yeah, where everyone's become pretty good everyone's pretty good at being able to obviously speak and deliver did stuff you, that makes sense did you ever get training for it or what was the best bit of advice you got for that uh, no, I didn't really get anything. I mean, as I say, the crew, the team we got, you know, Nathan at the moment, Prindy Gus, who's our, you know, the head of our, our department and everything, and, and our producers, Tunners and, and yeah. M and everybody Hilarious, in there that, that is, we've just got a incredible people. crew. Yeah. And so everyone, you know, they offer advice when they yeah. when they should. But even like basically. during your racing career, did anyone say, did anyone try oh. and train you? Uh, not really. Not, not really. really. You're just no. a natural We talker. don't really have that yeah, in but the sport, have you? I think. Well, they tried. I actually got worse when they tried to train. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 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 the best but the best part about you is the way you naturally do it, right? Well, that's that's what I mean. I why would this you? Why do you want to be perfect? You can't be. You can't be. Nah. So don't everyone, try. Everyone just sees you as. It's a better if so. you're natural. And and hey, listen, you get the young guys that are nervous and, and are coming through yeah, and course. starting to learn all that stuff, and Stand, that's yeah. all part of it. You don't yeah. you want to judge them for it. I mean, what do you expect? You know, it comes with time. You look at Anton. You yeah. know. Uh, beginning of last year, you know, he could hardly string a couple of words together and it usually didn't make sense. But now... But he's got to, be, got to be himself because he's actually a good person. That's correct. And yeah. he's, good, he's a good um, character for the sport. So he's got some funny stuff to say. So. And that's what we want. We yeah. want characters in the sport. We don't ever want, we don't ever want to be the same. We want no, them to no, be natural no. and themselves. And that's that's really important. Authentic. Speaking of characters then, we we got to get yeah. into this. <laughs> because I, I think your era was probably when our sport was at its peak for... For different personalities and um, definitely, definitely, he was the last sort of big character to leave the sport. Yeah, like having oh Russell probably. genuine rivalries. Yeah, probably you and Russell were the last two to really leave the yeah. sport. Yeah, before but, and then yeah. after that, there's there hasn't really been any. But there was good but, stuff between Mark uh, between Scafie and Russell and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, no, no, was, but yeah, no, that but like, mix of all yeah, those guys, yeah. of all you guys Very together outspoken. in that group, there was some really good rivalries. I mean, w what do you think that made that happen? What was the real concept behind it, do you think? That is really interesting, isn't it? Because um, we don't it really was, have. There was that no. Now. I don't know if there was a, f a formation of it. It wasn't sort of. It was well, just the fact that you know. We wanted to beat each it other. Was, it was. It was personalities. Our yeah. personalities. There was a clash there, and there was there was really mutual dislike, obviously, between oh, yeah. some people. <laughs> and yeah. and you know, I, I I've never I've never tried or gone out of my way to try and be you know be mates with people it's, it just yeah. happens right yep. um you know and and it's like I, I don't need to get on with you to go racing with you yeah yeah you know and when you're on the racetrack it doesn't matter who it is does it i mean when you nah. when you put the visor down and the lights come on it's like it doesn't matter that you know you go play squash with you bloody on tuesdays or you know go and go for a go to the gym or we go away on a holiday together or whatever like that. it doesn't matter you just go at it what happens afterwards though is 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 part of the problem everyone doesn't really want to get controversial anymore yep. whereas back in the day you know i said stuff that you know i just was my brain was completely flipped top head at the time and you removed it. And had <laughs> like the and, Gold Coast. And, and um, Gold Coast presser. Yeah, Gold, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was one but of the coolest things. that's the stuff things. that made it. I, I think that's the stuff that made people really interested. Not only did you have those on-track battles, you had the personalities and the stars of the show. To carry it. Yes. To, to make it To happen. have the stories. To but have it wasn't it, fabricated it and I don't no, think exactly. you can fabricate it again. And, and that's the thing. Why isn't it happening? I, I actually don't know the answer to it. You know, personally, um, you know, you know, I, I, I like, obviously, Dave, we're good mates, and I like Scott McLaughlin, we're good mates, and I've got huge respect for both of you, and I just I think you're both great. So I, 
you know, I, I enjoy, you I've enjoyed the yeah. yeah. <laughs> little bit of banter that's been going on, and I'm not going to. It's no, don't need to take sides. That's, I'm not going to take oh, sides. No, it's like, that's that's your personalities, you know. But that's been positive as oh, far as I'm absolutely. concerned. Absolutely, that stuff's yeah, positive. It's great. Trying to hide and try to you know push it away or whatever or not talk about it is, I think, is because now. Back in the day, there wasn't any control around it. There was no sponsors that were, you know, that were threatening anything. I don't know if that's happening now. But we weren't so concerned about that stuff. And I don't think the teams were either. Maybe the money was easier to find. Uh, but now I think there's a little bit of that protection around, oh, we don't want to be associated with, yeah, we want to you, send know, the right you know, our, all our colours and, our, and our, yeah, yeah. our sponsors and the stuff. Maybe I think people are a bit Clearly more protective of that. Clearly I don't care about that. that. <laughs> and maybe not. And, <laughs> and, and, I don't, and, I, and neither should anyone else... Um, that is supporting you in that operation. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. As long as it doesn't get stupid, which it's not. No. Then you know. And it never well, will. I don't. Think. No. So it's it's just a different different space we live in. I mean, you just look at it, what you what we have to do now to go about car racing, and, and the, it has changed a lot. It has changed. It has changed time. a lot. And and what you've got to do for for the sponsorship or for the money, so that you can be there doing that job. And I think maybe we're a bit more sensitive to that potentially. But keeping it more about you, those uh, those rivalries that you had. Are there people that you didn't get along with before that you get along with now? Um, listen, I think... Um, like it, someone you wouldn't have gone out to dinner with because oh. <laughs> that you would now. Like like if you saw Marcus Ambrose, if he walked in right now and said, let's go grab a beer, or would that even happen? Well, from my point of view, uh, if he said that, I would... Yeah, for sweet ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, Time does heal. <laughs> and, yeah, well, it, it was never really a problem for me. Um and it, it's strange, isn't it? You know, uh, we clearly didn't have a re- any kind of personal <laughs> relationship. And but before before all that stuff happened in um, two thousand and when was the press conference thing? Four two thousand four, four yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Before all that happened, there wasn't really any issues. I don't think before that we we were right. It was just a battle going on in the championship, and we went down to the wire in two thousand three between the two of us. And then um, two thousand four, it was we were battling it out again for first and second and I think he got a bit of an advantage going but the things broke down in that that uh, on the Gold Coast that year when we turned Rick around well no no Rick was following him Rick was a lap down and was behind and and he didn't like that and I was in I was in in second chasing him but wasn't able to get him and um and Rick was behind him but he was a lap down and he and he reacted after the finish line and jumped on the brakes and did a massive big bloody brake test on on Rick because he didn't like, hadn't liked him following him for however many laps it was. No he hadn't tried to pass him, hadn't done anything. Yeah, he was just sitting there. Sitting there yeah. But he didn't like him in his mirrors, and so he <laughs> gave, the, gave him the big brake test. And I and I was like, I was nah, hard on the gas going to the finish line. Next minute, I'm whoa, Ooh. passing two cars as <laughs> as as there's a blue one in the front who's stopping all of a sudden, and then the car, other Kmart car was like, oh shit, trying to get out of the way, and I went shoom, past them both. I'm like, what was going on there? Came into the pit lane, and he's come come down, and you know started having to go at wreck. About, you know, this is I'm trying Sucking to win a championship. Back. This is you know you, you shouldn't be allowed <laughs> to do that. To yeah. And I was don't like, follow me. I was like, oh, down. it's on. So <laughs> pile in as we do, yeah. and then and then the press conference. But so that's when it all started to fall apart. And then obviously Bathurst the following year. I mean, it, it, yeah. it just it was just festering all the way through, and that was the <laughs> that awesome. was like great the great crescendo team, mushroom cloud right there it's and then. Do you team, remember yeah. what when you're having the stash at Bathurst there? Do you remember what? You were saying and what he was saying. Can you remember? Oh, any, it was, was it just, just rubbish. <laughs> Absolutely. You can rubbish. sort of lip read it if you're oh, good at lip reading. I, I try every time. I would love really? the transcript. It was, of exactly it was what probably you're uh, every second yeah. or third word started with the F and then there was a few other starting with a C. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was just, it was like you can this and you know, anyway. I mean, the, the funny thing is, massive respect for him as a race car driver. Yeah. yeah. And that's huge that, respect. Yeah. Like, mm. and, and people all the time go, you know, because they're talking about Scott and what he's going to do. Is he going to go to America and all that kind of stuff? NASCAR. And he's, oh, you know, well, the last time that happened, it wasn't very good. Mark's thing. I thought, I thought, you got to be joking. I, I yeah. reckon what he did in America was, was unbelievable. Good. Absolutely. Very, very good. You know, successful. Mark, he never was with Penske. He oh. wasn't worth that he, you know, any of the top teams. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was amazing. I just take my hat off to him as a, as a race car driver. I think it was just, I think it was phenomenal. I, and I always thought that way. Always thought that way. But, you know, um, I think Scaife and I had a bloody uh, a serious, <laughs> you know, um, head-to-head for yeah. a long time. And, and I think 
more so from me is that I was probably very envious of the fact that he was winning so many bloody races. And then when I beat him, it was the fact that um, he was getting beat. We were getting. He was just getting beat, <laughs> and he was getting. And, and Pukekohe was the best stuff. Yeah. Was best. There's no way we would have gone out for dinner at any stage at any race at Pukekohe for five years. That's for sure. Um, and and I was driven by the fact that when we're, when I was at Kmart. That you know he was across the road HRT. Yeah, he was the they, big brother too. And they were the big brother, and we were, were just we were just a little you know shit canners over here. Yeah, you just rubbed him. And and I just it was nothing better than rubbing him up the wrong yeah. way by by beating him. You know that was just fantastic stuff. Well, wasn't it? Was it the bonnet jumping or the what was it? The bonnet jumping? Yeah, yeah, really, really Kale, got yeah, under yeah, his skin. Yeah, got up his nose. <laughs> you know and, what? And, what's this? Oh, the bonnet jumping. The bonnet Don't you remember that mm. uh, Mark spoke about oh, this yeah, when he was on this on this very show? You know, again and again, it's just it's like for me it was envy i suppose and just you yeah. know that, that that competition um envy competition of of you know how successful and how focused and how you know obviously how, how good he was um so the 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 opportunity at time you know it, when it was ever possible to to beat him to it, was, it was pretty serious <laughs> and you know but that was that was awesome that was just competitive spirit Yep. You know, again, it wasn't yeah. about the fact awesome. that you, yeah. you had to get on with each other or anything yeah. like that. That's what um, our sport's missing, I reckon. Yeah, so that was, yeah, it was, and there's, there's other rivalries all the way through there as well. But I yeah. mean, I, you know, there's no question I was, um, I was difficult to work with for, for a, large, <laughs> a, large, a large period, if not my entire career. Dude, um, I was your teammate in 2011. Yeah, I broke a hands device throwing it against the truck that year when I you know. were in there. I yeah. thought you were throwing it at me. No, <laughs> I wasn't here. I wanted to strangle you a few times. He broke it. He threw it at the truck. Oh, I was so uh, fro- freaking they're, they're angry. They're pretty, they're pretty they're robust. Solid, with yeah. Carbon fiber. And then, like, and then, <laughs> they're meant to protect your neck. And then when you pick it up and you realise you've just wasted all the thousand bucks, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, it makes it even worse. I never threw a helmet, though. There was never going to throw one of them. They're too expensive. Like, I've never met someone so angry after a bad race mm. in my life. It was actually... Who was that? You. Oh. <laughs> Moff's, Moff's pretty good. Is he? Yeah. Is he really? Well, maybe yeah. not nowadays. Moff in the day. Yep. James As Moffat. in James Moffat. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. He he was... No, nah, Murph was... See, like... I, miss, I miss Moff from being the champion because, yeah. you know, he, he was... You know, he was I used fiery. to look at him and go, man... I yeah. was nothing compared to so, you know <laughs> the him in some respects. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But that was. But that's good. That's, that's good. What we want. The problem with it is you don't realise at times how obviously yeah. disrespecting it is to the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and you know that in reflection is probably a bit of regret <laughs> from me. And because it was never it was that you never wanted it you never you wanted it, you never wanted it to be directed at the team. You know you weren't blaming. Them, but but no, but you were just bad at the outcome. But it looked like you were just yeah, yeah. Yeah. angry at the outcome. And then obviously when you're successful, it's the total flip side. But yeah. um, everyone loves you again. But yeah, well you were a mess <laughs> in 2011. You were just like la la land. Who knows what was going on? You, still had, the you were doing all sorts of weird <laughs> crap and bloody, I don't know, talking to weird people and in the middle Drinking of trying lambs, to go to or something, other race other, teams and stuff. It was. It was do, you remember, do you remember our training camp? We did? Oh, training camp. Have you? Has he spoken about this yet? No. no. Oh, here we go. Oh, dude, it's hilarious. We went on a Cali Racing oh, training I'm surprised camp. no one died that oh, year. Oh, no, we should have. Someone well, like, should have. Well, I think Boobs nearly drowned. <laughs> Someone yeah. should have died. Hey. No, no, Dave Russell, he nearly drowned. Yeah, and but also... No, uh, poor Boobs, old Timmy, I heard... Timmy, I heard Timmy just, Blanchard. He gave up on life. He, he was done. He was, he was upside down, uh, upside down in a canoe. Um, strapped in. Strapped in against some logs that were blocked across a river. <laughs> <laughs> like water, like, gushing. Gushing. Where, like, where was pushing this? Was this out of Mildura? It was down the Jamison River. Yeah, up um, by, um, what's up towards Mount Buller. Buller. It was oh, like yeah. the Jamison River. In, it was a in great, September. It was a in September. So great, you can imagine great, how warm yeah, yeah, that yeah. was. Oh, yeah. It was so cold. It was the most coldest day I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and they go, oh, let's go for a little paddle. Um, like, oh, they put us in the It was going to be river. three hours, right? Yeah, it was going to be three hours. They sent the search party for us 10 yep. hours later. Yep. <laughs> Dead set. So we got lost. Someone had to go. Someone actually took to uh, the side of a, of a hill uh, in, in the ravine where the river was and climbed out and found a road and ran to try and <laughs> to try and it, save it like, us. <laughs> yeah. It was like oh, the end of Wolf he, Creek. Him and, him and Tim, him and Tim, he's just like, I'm done. I'm out. And he just, he just like, it's <laughs> given up. Yeah. And, and, and just, and sort of veered over to the side of the river and was, we don't know where we were, middle of nowhere. And he's just, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm just, I'm going this way. And I'm getting out of my out of here. It was just the funniest thing. A, and in between, he's, he's doing, and but so then, he, then he'd disappear at night. Uh, this is after we all got saved. Yeah, we're saved out of the river. And, um, and then he'd disappear at night and up the road somewhere and be on his phone because he was he was doing his deal. Doing with, dodgy oh, deals. That's, right. you were, <laughs> that's when you ring up yeah. old Rod Nash. Yeah, 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 I a, need to get out of this yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to <laughs> kill me. Yeah. 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 That was part of my reasoning. Yeah. And, and in that case, that was true. He 
we were trying to kill him, but we were also trying to kill ourselves at the that same time. That was such a Were you any day. fitter for that endurance camp? No, well, we, were, we, we were mentally, mentally more stronger. <laughs> we were mentally stronger because, you know, dying was a possibility mm. that day, so anything right. else didn't matter. But remember the next day? We went on that long bushwalk. Yeah, yeah. It was, that was supposed oh, to be so a couple hours. Oh, so you kept hours. going yeah. again, even the day up, after we ended up walking dying. for 25 k's <laughs> <laughs> with no food, no water. And every, oh, we'll just so <laughs> off it at the end. Who, who ran was, this thing? Tom oh, Kelly, have a guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he planned just went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually funny as now we look back at it. Dame, right. Damo's going to be proud you didn't throw him under the bus for well, that no, one. it was all told, yeah. wasn't it? it was, oh, he, was, that was, he was the big one. It turns out it was incredibly funny. Mate, you spoke about regrets before. 2009. Yeah. What happened to you? Adelaide, first round, <laughs> first race. Oh, no, I know where this is Do going. Do you have any regrets from that 2009. day? 2009. You turned some little bloke around. You Did turned it? someone around. They had a Do brand it. new race car. They were just trying to <laughs> press along, you know, at the beginning of a 250 well, all I can race. say, All I can say is that... Um, I did turn someone around at uh, turn three at uh, Adelaide one year. That and, was and co- surrounded by a concrete wall. <laughs> so if you're turning someone around, there's yeah, there's not much room to. Just, just trying to think of actually who that was. <laughs> 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 not a current driver. <laughs> no, I actually did it in two thousand. I did it. I also did it in 1999 to someone as well. <laughs> did you? Same yeah. spot, just, but I did it on purpose that day. And who was that? Um, yeah. Who oh. was that? Rod- Dougal McDougal. No. Um, <laughs> Dougal McDougal. Rodney, Rodney. Forbes. Forbes. Rodney Forbes. Oh, yeah. Forbes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was, or maybe it was 2000. Yeah, and he was, um, he was in our team at the time as a third car, which was just not working at all. And, um, so he got rid of it. <laughs> well, well he, was so, a lap, yeah. he was a lap down and he held me up for like a lap and a half what? or something. So I was just like, I, just, I can't See you later. deal with this anymore. Get out of my way. <laughs> Anyway, so that was on purpose. You, on the other hand, was not on purpose. And I felt guilty about that. And I, now you've made me feel guilty again. <laughs> because you didn't deserve it. I remember. Um, you remember? I remember. <laughs> remember. That you, you, we I, didn't, I didn't get to see you. Yeah, you, I wasn't there, yeah. I don't think, of when you came down. But you actually went and apologised to Gary. Because obviously, you and Gary have a pretty good relationship. You won yeah. a Bathus with him and... The 24 hour, 24 yeah. 24 hour and what have you. So, um, oh, like, huge amount of respect for, yeah, for yeah. Gary, obviously. And yeah, Lord that was, course. that was not, that <laughs> was not a, pr- my, a brand new car. It was car. brand new car. God, <laughs> brand new car. <laughs> that was actually one of the hardest living. things I've ever had to do was walk into that shed. I mean, that, you, you know, I, I, th- I would like to think, and there'll probably be someone who'll actually find this wrong that I've, you know, when I actually have been guilty, I've, I've tried to actually take. Responsibility, for gentleman it. Greg. I tried to, yeah. I, and, and <laughs> Greg. yeah, no, well, it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that could, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if those two words can actually go together. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, thanks, Michael. Um, I, I do regret that one. No, uh, well, I do regret that one. I do have another story, boys. Just hold um, it because I've got to run. No, this is a story you will want to listen to. Trust me. Right, I'll ring Barry right. Ryan when you leave and just I'll, I'll call everything over. Yeah, <laughs> now he's late for a briefing. Is there anything you want to tell us about? The last time you drove a convertible Mustang huh? um, on New Zealand soil. Oh, this is a setup like you would not believe, <laughs> thanks to the bloke that you are currently sharing a car with in the Pertec <laughs> Enduro Cup. Waters, is, you are, you are what, dead to me. You're what, dead to me. <laughs> You're dead what to happened me. that day, mate? I know you, that's, this is what this show's about. We don't want to know about... What you think about other drivers? We want to know what you. What you happened to you? you, you what happened? Probably, so, I have no story. idea what he's talking about. Oh I man! I can I can kind of guess if it's this going to go and down. This is oh I, and oh actually I feel more guilty about that than I do about ten years. <laughs> <around that one. laughs> now you do, now you're like yeah. no, I'm happy yeah, to do another in the fence. Uh, so we were at the snow farm at Cadrona. Um, was that last year? Yep. I think it was last year. It was last winter, last July or something. Snow Farm at Cadrona. <laughs> doing a gig up there. Um, got invited along to, to do some stuff with Cam, do some filming uh, for our, our TV show in New Zealand, amongst other things. Um, obviously, his sponsor, Monster, was doing a drive day there. They had all these people um, there doing this experience, which is, let's just amazing. go off to a tangent, is amazing to be driving yeah. at a snow farm in cars. And uh, um, the good people there had organised a bunch of um, uh, Mustangs for the day to do this uh, do this drive program. And um, 
And you chose a convertible. Well, or did look, it I mean, you? it's a, be- a convertible choose you. It's a you beautiful choose? day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. It's minus four, no wind, and it's just stunning. And it's like, well, there's a convertible. Oh, bloody get the roof off, don't we? <laughs> get the roof off. No snow tires. We're on just, oh, we're really? on tires, and we're driving along. Oh, I've done this before, Cam. Just follow me. <laughs> and uh, so, so what happened is uh, he had his phone. I think he had his phone out the, <laughs> out the window. Uh, this is all controlled environment, people. This is not on <laughs> yeah, yeah, public not roads. Private property. And uh, he had the phone over and or something like that. And I had the roof down. And I'm like, yeah, this is how good this is. And then the old Mustang went sideways. I'm like, oh, I got this. Oh, no, I haven't got this. <laughs> and, it's, and it's into a snowbank on the left-hand side. <laughs> no way. Like nine kilometres an hour or something, right? Like, And yeah, it was like, oh, no, 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 into the snowbank. It's quite a hard snowbank. So I put a mark. <laughs> it definitely put a mark on the front, mus- on the front guard. Well. But what was worse was that old mate behind me, he um he was sort of like laughing. He was shadowing you. Now, he was laughing pretty hard at that stage because I turned to look at him he was laughing Macaulay and Jonesy. then go into go into full shock mode as he realised he couldn't avoid driving into it's the back no. of my Mustang <laughs> in his Mustang. And because they've been sitting outside all night, they had gone. They were like frozen. These cars <laughs> and the oh, bumper snap. and everything on it was <laughs> brittle. And so he's driven through the back of the one that I was in, and it's exploded. Like, there's just <laughs> there is there is orange bumper plastic <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. So uh, you wrote two cars off. No, no, his one was all right. <laughs> no, your service. one was finished. He said his his, his one was was all, said, all right. But he my... said this is five minutes into the day. <laughs> How come this oh, not into like driving it? Oh, at maximum five. minutes. Minutes into the day, <laughs> maximum. Yeah. So we had to take my one back up and hide it because it was, <laughs> it was, it was just drag it on the road. Thank you, Cam. Way. Thank you, Cam. I'm not your friend anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dave's Dave's disappeared. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> Typical. I've Dave. seen Barry Ryan in some pretty angry sort of moods in the past, right? You reckon he'd be upset? Well, because well, that's where he's so he's heading off to a if he's late a pre-brief if he's late for a race meet yeah. if he's late. Yeah, um, but he's not going to get there on time. <laughs> well, well, he's not in Melbourne traffic. We know. Uh, we know what something. Barry's like on TV. So imagine what he's like when there's no cameras around. <laughs> That's <laughs> weird. We've, we've had some good times, Baz and I. Some good times. Good times. Mm. Um, mate, I wanted to ask you the your son's now doing a bit of racing. Are we going to see <laughs> the next Greg Murphy? He's, he's coming through, doing a bit of running at the moment in New Zealand, isn't he? Bloody hard. It's it hard. Is, I mean, it you, is, you know, it, it is. Yeah, it, it's. I have been, um, unfortunately for Ronan, I've I've not been um, probably a strong advocate. Which <laughs> I know that sounds ironic, and a lot of people expect, you know, that this is and this That's is one happen. of the things that yeah. it's just an expectation that, um, you know, you've got a son, so he's going to be a race car driver. Yeah. And 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 I suppose I've actually I've probably got a bit of a problem with that cliche. You know, I just I was like, oh, it's, it's it is a cliche kind of thing. Yeah. And and, and it's just so not. Uh, that simple is it? It's just nah, so not that there's simple. There's a more to it, and um, and and that's where I feel probably uh, you know, um, like I'm <laughs> probably letting him down a bit because of my lack of enthusiasm <laughs> for for the whole situation. But you know, it it's just so tough. It really is tough. And I suppose I don't want to. I just don't want him to be disappointed. Yeah. In many respects. Does he want to be just like Dad? Is that? His oh, I, I think he hopes. To, I hope he wants to be like someone else, not like, like Dad. I hope he wants to be like. <laughs> Bloody, you know, Scott McLaughlin or someone. <laughs> not like David Reynolds. Was well, no, not David. <laughs> um, you know, um, and he's his own person. He's he is he's quite different to me. His personality and everything. But you know, he's very focused, and he's and he's uh, you know, pretty. He's got a strong desire to want to be driving a car. Um, so he's doing a bit of Formula Four at the moment in New Zealand, and that's um, that's interesting. I mean, he had a ball at Pukekohe because uh, they had the first round of the national championship, which was uh, support category there at Pukekohe to that. So that was that was pretty special. But um, he's uh, you know over the last however many years it's been now that he you know he's been to go to been able to go to racetracks. He's obviously met quite a few of you blokes, and and he thinks that's pretty pretty awesome. And um, you know the fact that he's he's getting a bit of attention is good and bad. Obviously that um, you know. Some guys in the field are, are keeping an eye on and watching, watching yep. what's going on. But it's um, <clears throat> it's he's in a, in that really interesting phase at the moment because he's got to get, 
he's got to get that experience. He's got to get, yeah. you know, um, time on the board, essentially. But, and everyone progresses at a different level the, in and, motor and racing. At a different speed. And he's very late. He's 18 years old. So he's already behind the eight ball, really, in many respects of what is, is seen considered, as, the, yeah. as the, uh, yeah. Yeah, considered the, the norm these days, which is you're in a car at 14 and, and by 16 you're overseas and blah, blah, yeah. blah, and off you go. And and so he's, he's a little bit out of, out of whack in that respect. So we'll just, we'll just have to play it by ear. Um, p- to be honest, you know, the... Uh, the thing and where I would probably be trying to actually push him in the direction would be probably the States uh, if he was going to do anything and, and try to get over there because I think, um, you know, the Europe thing is just a... It's difficult, isn't oh, it? It's just, I, I, I can't understand why why as many drivers try to go, try yeah. to go there um, because I just think the, the challenges over there are just, just astronomically difficult, whereas in America, these, you know, IndyCar is pretty strong and obviously Roger Penske buying it, it's going to be pretty interesting moving yeah. forward. Um, but, uh, you know, I love that racing too. I just love that racing and I think they've got some strong categories over there which might be a little bit more affordable and, uh, you know, not easy, but maybe maybe not as challenging to get into. But um, we'll just have to see how that how that plays out. Get through the, this season Formula Ford and just get some runs under his belt and get that experience, you know. Um, and I think the category over there at the moment is not going too bad. There's some really good young drivers over there that are pushing each other really hard. So that's 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 some that's good learning. You ran in the did mm-hmm. you race in the states at all? Did you do some sports car racing or something? Uh, you did a little no, I, I I wanted to. I did the Daytona 24 hour. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> but that was I mean we're talking 1996. Yeah. Um, and that was in a, in a, a GD2 Porsche, which was an amazing experience. So I did Daytona and I did Le Mans the same year. Yep. We finished Le Mans, actually. Um, finished second in our class over there, which was which was awesome, but we didn't finish Daytona. But that's the, that's effectively the only race I've done. I went to right. the, I've tested a few cars over there. My, my dream was, you know, Indy car. And I, so I did a few Indy Lights tests. I t- did a test for Steve Horn and, and one of his oh, Tasman cool. Indy Lights cars um, and a couple of others as well. Um, uh, drove an IndyCar once, only only very briefly at a small racetrack in, in Indianapolis, um, and uh, tested the panels over there mm-hmm. before we went and raced it um, at the Race of a Thousand Years yep. on the Adelaide Street Circuit. Um, a few other bits and pieces, but that that's that was sort of really my my sort of length of of uh, competition over there. So it was it was the place I wanted to go. IndyCar was was where I wanted to be. Go on. Oh, I wanted to ask. Number 51, where's the attachment come from? <laughs> I've told this story like twice this year. Really? About it, and it's, it's, not, it's not very entertaining. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I'll, you know, I'll happily well, pass the, it on. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to know. Well, you know, that was, that was when um, I ended up at Kmart back in, um, you know, 2001. The whole uh, Gibson Motorsport and all that stuff where I was with Gary Dumbrell in 2000 all exploded and it was left without a drive and then we picked up the pieces and took Kmart to TWR and, and that's where Kmart Racing was formed and, and so they had the, the Young Lions car there at the time, Todd Kelly was driving that, expanding to two cars at Kmart Racing, <coughs> Doug Brumby was our sign, sign, our sticker guy who was still around the paddock doing amazing things and um, we were like, oh, we're going to get a number. I mean, it was a franchise thing and was all yeah, bloody a mess back right. then. It was really, uh, I can't remember it all, but it was a mess. And we were running under someone else's franchise and stuff. And it was it was all pretty challenging. It was like, oh, we need a number for the car. It's like, oh, okay, well, we've got 15. Let, what, you know, is 14 available? No. 16 available? No. And Doug's like, oh, well, if you if you got 51, all we'd have to do is turn <laughs> the numbers around and uh, save cutting an extra number. <laughs> <laughs> 51 was available and that's it it's just stuck on the side and it stuck on the side of the car and that was it from there on in it was, that's the reason so there was no no attachment to the number I mean it was pretty cool in those eras that you know a driver was glued to a number effectively yeah and and you know it stuck forever yeah, where now we don't really have that type of no no you know, it, everyone no there's not that significance and it became quite obviously quite significant for, yeah. a, for a very long period of time so um, you know we was it was good enough of um uh, back then, Keys Keys Wheel as well to yeah. well, came up racing, handed it over, and I took it with me to to PWR, to and then yeah. and then um, they handed it over and gave it to me to go to Tasman as well. So you know that was actually it was pretty cool. And then um, uh, I had it tonight. Did I have? I had it. At Paul Morris. Yeah, I had it at Paul Morris, yeah, Morris as well. Is, yeah. And then the first year at Kelly Racing, yeah, I didn't yeah. have it. No. Um, and I can't remember the reason now for that. And then the following year, we, we managed to grab it. So yeah, it was I went a year without it for, uh, in 2011, which was a bit strange. But I had 11 on my car, which was Larry Perkins's number yeah. at the time. So yep. mm, which was that franchise uh, was Larry's the number. No, that's yeah, right. Back then, mm. I think that's actually the franchise I was under. But then. Um, Probably when I went there, Norton was the, the number they wanted. <clears throat> the trump. 360. So. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, the numbers are sort of lost nowadays. Absolutely. I mean, well, you got stuck with 23. 
Yeah, um, which is the you know, number. Which, which you know, you you were had uh, reminiscent with for for a, how long? Yeah, was that? Uh, it was a long time. Five years, I think. Yeah, so. but, yeah, yeah. But, but that became quite attached to you. Yeah, yeah, yep. So that's because you were the good. Nissan factory car. Yep. Yeah, that's, it's funny now. It's more like you said, rather than a driver sort of picking it up. We've seen it with F1. They, you know, have a number now that the mm, drivers well, can choose. Yeah, it, can't yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. went back. They good. went back to that, <clears throat> like trying to have the iconic numbers. But um, anyway, one of my highlights of this season so far was Thursday afternoon at the Bend. It was you, me, and Thomas Randall <laughs> having a chat in the sunshine, a, bit, a tiny bit of sunshine. And Thomas is <laughs> literally Beaming. jumping on it, jumping on the spot. He's about to make <laughs> his debut, and he says to you. Murph, do you remember when you had your first solo race in Supercars as a driver? And you went, yeah, I stuck it on pole. And I've never seen the enthusiasm <laughs> just drain out of somebody's face. And then he sort of just stopped in his tracks. He's uh, like, really? You're uh, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was great. And then, So that's all we're expecting from you tomorrow, yeah, yeah, Tom. Yeah, it was just, yeah. it was such a funny conversation. Oh. But I mean, that was just the way you came into the, obviously through Super Touring. But then you were a Bathurst winner, stick it on pole at your first round. Like it was a, it was I, a remarkable way to come into the championship. Yeah, it was, it was. I suppose that's something that you pinch yourself with, you know, and I, I have reflected on that too, you know, it was, it was wacky. It was, and, and it was even wackier because I turned up in Australia in 1994 at Eastern Creek to do one race meeting in a Formula Holden or Formula Brabham for the Australian Drivers' yeah. Championship. We had $12,000 that we managed to amass from our racing in New Zealand that season, and it was April uh, 1994, and we'd, this, we'd, saved up and, and managed to come out on top with so we had a surplus which was pretty amazing Jeez, yeah. um but that 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 came from you know so many years of grind and and the old man tipping and so you know everything he could possibly scrape up over the years but anyway twelve thousand bucks right we've got to do something can't stick in new zealand you know go to australia and um we met some guys who'd come to New Zealand for that for our summer season and bought some Formula Holdens over. It was the first time a Formula Holden had raced over there and it was, you know, it was it was all all pretty good. And um, so that was all quite swimmingly and so we turned up in Australia, we did our homework, we did a couple of days testing at Eastern Creek before the race meeting. Um, won both the races uh, against mainly was Paul Stokel was the, oh, the key cool, guy. Oh yeah, he was the gun. Yep, absolutely. And um, won both the races and Peter Addison walked in uh, to the garage, who Peter Addison from Boost, and at the time was shareholders with Terry Morris and Super Touring, and that was the first ever Super Touring race. So we were a support category to that. So he'd seen the two me win the two races and thought, oh, I'll go and see who that kid is. W- wanders on in. Who are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm Greg from New Zealand. And um, he went, oh, you want to drive my Super Tour at the next round in three weeks' time at Phillip Island? See, that's cool. And I just would, uh, and I'd already, you know, had a few promises and stuff from plenty of people. So I was, you know, a little bit circumspect yeah. about, about that. And who the hell is this guy? Anyway, it happened. And um, I, I drove the Toyota Carina at Phillip Island, um, I don't know, a few weeks later and ra- raced the Formula Holden because we'd managed through having some success, managed to, to go again, pull some more money together. And uh, things were going quite well. So that took off. And through Peter, um, I got um, to drive some more Super Tourers, and then through Peter, I got attached to Brad um, Brad Jones to do the Super Touring oh, right. stuff mm-hmm. uh, in the Oryx Audis for ninety five, ninety six. That was a, that's a whole other story. Um, and but my dream, obviously, oh, and I got to do Bathurst that year. So I went and did Bathurst that year with James K um, from England. He came out because he'd been racing that car or someone or a similar car in the UK, the Carina. So that was the last year of two litre cars and yep, and, v- yep. and um, Group A cars yep. together. And so we got to race that car at, at Bathurst that year. Uh, Campbell Little was our engineer. Oh, right. Yeah, so he was looking after the car, and it was a mismatch of uh, all sorts of people, but it was you know, it was my first experience at Bathurst. So that's the first time I actually turned up there was the first, was like a day before the first practice session to go up there. It was like in just crazy awe of the place. But obviously you wanted to race a... A V8. You yeah. wanted to race a Group A car, and the following following year, I was you know working through that progress, and and my first ever drive in a V8 was Peter Brock's 05, How you know, cool. the Holden dealer team car, um, which was just well, Holden Racing Team car. Which and is what was just what was staggering. it like? What well, I mean, when you when you knew you were going to drive that, firstly, was that. You know, in itself, I was that shitting was, myself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and well, I didn't know I was going to be 05. So I turned up at Calder. All right. I turned up at Calder after I got the phone call from Jeff Greek, which I thought was a hoax to start with, right? Because he rang me and on my mobile phone, I was living in Sydney, and he rang, and I thought it was a hoax. So I, there's this guy on the phone. I'm going to ask Jeff Greek here. Um, just wondering if you'd like to come and have a drive in our car. And I'm like, 
which one of my asshole mates? Because <laughs> <laughs> they all knew, obviously, that I was looking, yeah. trying to get a drive. Yeah, yeah. And I was too terrified to even think that HRT, you know, the team yeah. that Brock the team. drove that was going to bloody take on someone like me. But they'd taken on Lowndes. So it was like, well, um, there's no way they're going to go for another, another young Another kid, bloke. yeah. Mm. Anyway, it was Jeff. And after I sort of gathered myself, he invited me down to Melbourne, turned up at Calder in, I think it was May, and it's just horizontal sleet, as as we all know. Yeah, and the yeah. other times we've been out of Calder Park. It was like, I don't know, probably eight degrees, freezing cold, raining, blowing a howling gale. And I rock up, there's the HRT truck and the marquee out the front of it. And underneath it is sitting there as, as 05 with Brock on the window. Yeah. So was he there that day? No, he wasn't there. Um, um, but and and they go, well, get your gear on. I'm like, you're kidding me, aren't you? It's like it's right. you've never, you don't even know me, you haven't, and you're going to put me in Peter Brock's race car that probably needs to go to a race meeting next weekend. Yeah, you know, you were on. Terrified, came onto the front straight the first lap, and that's the VHT. You know, the VHT yep. on the straight, mm, on the yep. straight, came on the and went blip on the throttle, and it went. Whoa. And I was facing the concrete fence on my first lap. <laughs> For whatever reason, I never hit anything and I carried on and and, yeah, and and got the got the drive. So, the you know the the thing about that was we went to Sandown that year, didn't finish, had uh, had some engine dramas. We went to Bathurst that year. I never got in the car in the race because we were out before beforehand with another engine problem, and that was done. So the 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 most stupid thing is that the first time I actually ever drove a V8 in the great race. Wait, so you didn't do any practice or anything? I did practice. But, I practiced oh, race but the first time first I race first lap. time I ever drove a V8 in the great race, I won. Well, that's amazing. Lowndes, Lowndes won and I yeah. was just <laughs> yeah. I was I was carrying his helmet. Oh, exactly. yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're I was, I was like, hey, you want a drink, Lowndes? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which is just which is ridiculous. I mean that's you know That's, that's pretty cool. That is crazy. I mean Nick Perkett won it on debut with, yeah, with that's GT right. and, yeah. and there's probably others, but but the you know, the that was it was just staggering. And that's where it, that's where it all all started. So, you know, and then that year progressed on and I went to New Zealand and, and drove over there with Brock as a as his teammate as a solo driver as when uh, Lowndes buggered off overseas to do his That's right. do his yeah. some testing and 3000 stuff and um, yeah and then turned up the following year and yeah the first race <laughs> we go back to the full circle what was, yeah. was the question you asked earlier about you know when we're talking about Thomas yeah the first race turned up at Calder and I mean we the car was amazing yeah. amazing race team amazing car tyres where the Bridgestones everything was there to do the job and Lowndes had obviously scolded everybody the year before we went and won Sandown Bathurst I mean, the expectation was that, that you why, would it, why would it stop? Yeah. Why yep. would it stop? Unfortunately, we you know we went through the year of having some quite significant mechanical failures, which were unexpected. But it was all part of you know what the, the progress of learning was with with the team, and um, you know it became quite costly that season, unfortunately. At what point in that year do you start hearing that Craig might come back and that? things might sort of come to an end at the end of that season. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, that was really interesting. It, it, it wasn't until a lot later in the season. And I'd, I, I'd, I don't even think when we got to the Enduros that I sort of really saw what was going on. And that was probably quite naive of mm -hmm. me at the time because Scafie was obviously – Brock was retiring. Mark yep. was in the fold. And, and I hadn't really put two and two together, I don't reckon, until yeah. quite late on in the piece that, um, you know – uh, and I was probably also thinking, why would you want to come back from Europe racing 3,000 yeah. cars and, and maybe on the way to bloody, you know, stardom over yeah. there? And I was also still had my eye and a few fingers on America. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a really a bit of a mix. And, and so I, I sort of feel at the time I was all bitter and twisted, but I was probably a little bit at blame myself for being one naive and two having my eye on another prize yeah. as well and trying to still trying to chase a dream and I had good there was a lot of people at the time at HRT and also w through the sponsor group that were also trying to help me do that as well as you know what I was doing at, at, in in the, in the um, group A car at the same time so it was a it was a real interesting period you know because it was all there was a lot happening in 96 as I say I went into Daytona went into Le Mans um uh, was racing super tourers, um, was talking to people about super touring stuff in America as well and all sorts of things, opportunities flying around, um, doing 
doing sand in and bathurst with HRT. It was just it was chaos. It was it was amazing, absolutely amazing. And not living the dream, isn't it? It was. It was hundred percent living the dream. And and you know I you know just, I remember at the time just going I don't know what you know you you were trying to keep your finger on all the all the pies. Yeah. Or keep you know but but um that was really difficult to do obviously but things were going really really well and on 97 I did the deal signed that signed the deal with Creno at the hotel on the Saturday afternoon at um at well on the Wellington Street race when we were there doing the the um the sprint series that mm-hmm. we went and did so it was Pukekohe in Wellington the last ever Wellington Street race um we did the deal on Saturday afternoon sitting in his hotel room um in between the, the uh, Saturday and Sunday <laughs> races to drive for 1997 and, at, at HRT, um, and so yeah, it was a, it was an interesting time, and I I just I sort of missed the boat on, and I think with me trying to go overseas to Austra- uh, to America, um, you know, Scafey coming in and replacing Brock, Lounsey having his his all his stuff going on, it was just one of those things that the way it worked out, and you were, I was better in twist at the time because I was the one that got tossed, but at the end of the day, I was also trying to do other things, you know, yeah. so. You know, it's the way it was. Now, I've got to ask the lap of the gods because it, it is. Do you have to, really? Yeah. Mate, have you ever have spoken to. about it's this before? Have you talked about this much? Well, not, not this since 2003. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is. It's still, for me, you know, watching, how, you know, the way that whole qualifying session. Are you sure people are going to watch all this? We've well, been 100%. talking for donkeys. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll keep listening. All right. they'll listen. if, yeah. you, if you stay here, they will. If it's <laughs> yeah. just me and him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll switch well, off pretty quick. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. No, we, but we it, it, it's that. just such an iconic, <laughs> it, it's, you know, through periods of supercars or through motor racing, you know, all the touring cars and everything, That that is, it is one of the most it, to watch it. It's it's like it it's gives the lap. goosebumps. It's still the lap. And I'm sure if Scotty Mack was here, he would also say, that's the lap. But, yeah, so... But it was unexpected. Like, nowadays, unexpected. you're like, oh, <clears throat> yeah, everyone should roll a three or, you know, we're probably going to break a two or whatever. It's sort of expected. That that time, and I don't know, from the outside, I obviously wasn't within the team. I don't know if, how the engineers or the other drivers sort of knew that time was within reach. But it didn't no. seem like it because no one. at the, you know, when... When John when John well, did his time, well, when he did his time, everyone was like, "Geez, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you know." That's. Well, he repeated what he did on Friday. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, he effectively exactly repeated what he did on Friday, which, you know, which. Uh, but at uh, the time, that was such a big gap. Like well, we, he yeah, well, we had away. well, we had we'd, no one had been in the sevens yeah. before. So Scafey, me, and him, and Bowie, you know, on Friday, on the, all within a tenth, you know, never been in the sevens before. I, I don't even know if we'd been in the eights, had we? Uh, maybe we had. Um, no, but I think you had 2003 because the track obviously had been resurfaced. Yep. Uh, for that year, and it was—I mean, the thing was mint. It was really good. I—I I, I never thought about it for a long time, but I think subliminally, looking back from 12 months earlier, if you remember what happened 12 months earlier, spending five minutes mm-hmm. in pit lane. Yep. The five. Um, I think uh, that had such an effect because I, I mean I was I didn't take that very well. Funny, no, no, yeah. um, no. and that Funny. was that was really really hard because <laughs> because the, every year it came out, and this is we were, without a word of a lie because I mean I, I think everyone would probably agree that what was there those years every year it came out we were in we were in the uh-huh. throes of winning that yeah. winning that race Bloody you know finished third in two thousand and um, in two thousand and one with with Todd and we had been leading and at front of the field like a lot of other people and and then two thousand and two the car every time we went there the car was fantastic. And so, you know, to have it taken away like that, I was, you know, you, you move past it. Well, I'd never move past it probably, but, um, you know, you move on. But I reckon 12 months later we turned up and Gerald McDornan, who was obviously yeah. you know, holding PR and stuff that we all know really well, you know, he set up that, put a port mm. on the on the wheels, <laughs> like created a frame and set a port <laughs> on it with these mag, holding mag wheels on it and stuff. Yeah. And, and we made a bit of a joke of the whole thing, you know, and, and had a bit of a laugh, but... I think deep down it actually it's was still it was it was it was a tool that I was using, you know, strength to, and, and it created determination about it. You know, I don't know who knows, but but you know, we rolled rolled the car out, and this and this is the strange thing, and it's happened to a lot of people over the years. But you know, we rolled the car out that that year, put it on the racetrack, and and it was like it was just magic from day dot. Well, I think we were fastest on all the sessions on Thursday. And we rolled into Friday pretty pretty confident. Went through, <coughs> excuse me, went through the program, and um, rolled into qualifying. And the car was really good again. And you know we ended up provisional pole. 
um, <clears throat> and I was I was really really confident with with the car. We we didn't do a I, I don't think we did a simulation on Saturday morning, but um, Which I remember strange, isn't it? Like, yeah, well, I can't remember uh, if we did or we didn't. If it, if we did it, did, we weren't fastest. And Rob, I remember Rob Crawford coming to me and saying, "Oh, you know, he was really worried because we'd been so quick." He said, "Oh, you know, is everything all right?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, everything's great. No no dramas. I'm all, all good. Um, ready to go." And I think they were a bit like, oh, shit, we've lost some pace. You know, we're not as good as what we, you know, thought we were, whatever. And then, you know, rolled into, into the shootout. And it was, it was, it was I remember it being quite different. I'm, you know, I just, I remember getting in the car quite early, which is not something I always did. Because I, I suppose to get around the anxiousness and nervousness or whatever, I used to just talk. Yeah, get it. Yep. To people, you know, yeah. and, and chat to the boys or whatever. And then, you know, I was al- I was always getting told to get in the car. But that time I got on the car a bit earlier and I was just sitting there. And I, and I, I, I think I just knew what I needed to do and I've never run I don't know if you did I never ran um predicted laps or anything on the on the dashes because I just hated them I always used to look at them and bloody stuff up the next sector you know um so and it was never there and so you didn't know what was no, happening absolutely not I, but I did know when I when I got to the end of the pit lane so it was my turn to roll out obviously Scafey was warming up um Bowie was finishing his lap and he finished his lap and I'm sitting at the end of the lane ready to go and the crowd went spastic yeah, yeah right yeah. and Eric Pender knew not to. He never knew. I never wanted to know what the times were because okay. there was just no point. Mm. What are you? Yeah, you were going to do. How's that going to make you? Yeah, I already knew that I had to drive the car faster than I'd ever driven it before, and and not make a mistake and and yeah, put just it, put do it what together. You do. Yeah, because yeah. you don't go out there to go. Right, well, I'm just going to drive it 99 percent today. Mm. You know? Yeah, I only need to do a, a time. That's no. all. I need. No, yeah, yeah you I just never. Want to get you only, the most you don't have to just do a time, and then, and that's what was so special about the shootout. And I think there was some there was some really cool stuff this year. Um, and the broadcast around the shootout, you know, because the shootout for me was was just a, was an event in itself. Yeah, and it still is. Oh, yeah, you know? it still is. It's it the is best an, part of the season. It's, it's probably one of the best yeah. hours of the whole year. I think you're a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, so I much agree. rides on it because so as much. a driver, not just you know, and I'm sure in team land as well, when you talk about the people that work within the teams, everyone puts a lot on it because there's so much pride. You know, as, as a driver, I know when you when you make the shootout number one, you. It doesn't matter where you are in the shootout. Mm. You're like, yep, I'm in. Yep. This is my chance. Yep. You get that two, two and two and a bit of minutes of glory on the best race circuit with with every millions eyeball. of eyes watching. Every on. single you, eyeball. You know, you've and, and it's not many opportunities like that. that there you isn't. Just get the track to yourself, a chance to shine, yeah. and um, and have a crack. And you've you've multiple times got pole position there. But that's, so it's, that's what it was like for me. And and you know, so I I knew when when the crowd went nuts. I was like, okay, well. He's laid it down, and and it had to be at least what he'd done the day before for the crowd to react, yeah. or it was better, right? So I was like, okay, well, you know, it's got to and be not good. that I wasn't planning on absolutely Gun. doing everything. Yeah, that's right. But uh, it was interesting this year um, when uh, watching from the pit lane and watching McLaughlin start his shootout lap. It was the it was turn one that set it up. Yeah. It was turn one. It always is, and it was it was mega. I remember watch standing there with my headset off, listening because it's just a great sound. And I remember going, "Holy shit, that was deep!" Yep. And then he just, and then it was he a just tenth and a half up, turn, turned and turned and burned, and it was gone. Yep. You know, and that was the sector. That corner was the one that he'd been working on for you know a day and a half, pretty much. I think, and uh, and that was what did it for me. That's what set the lap up because I just knew, you know, we had to. You had to get in there and and be so crisp on the throttle and early on the throttle to to get up that hill as fast as you can, and because and, we know how steep it is mm. to do that, and and that's what set the lap up right from the beginning. Because the first sector I think was was pretty pretty mega. So you knew, so you've hit the brakes into one. And I knew you've it was gone, good. Oh, hang on, we're on. I here. knew that was good, but 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 you don't know how good. Yeah. Was yeah. I, is it is it point zero two? Better or is yeah. it? You know, is it a two tenths? But or you know it what you got, don't you? When you when you bowl in a turn one, you're like the car feels very good. If you it, know when yeah. you get to turn two, I can then you know if extend. Hooks, you know, if it, if it hooks there, you know, if it really hooks there, you, you know, and it's and that means you you know you've set the tire up just right yeah. and, it, and it's ready to go. And so you know, from that point on, it was it was good until I got to the dipper and bloody wrong slotted it out of out of the dipper and jammed it straight into first gear instead of third. <laughs> So Those are the good old days when we had to move the gear lever across oh, as they well. Were the best. They were the best. They were the best. Bring it days. Back. Bring it back. Work. You yeah. had to work. You had to work hard. That's, that's one of our. That's one of yeah. our podcast slogans: is bring yeah. back the H baton. Bring it's back got the H It's got it. Bring gotta, back the Hollander. I think everyone would be pleased yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So did you think you'd blown it when you when you hit yeah. the wrong gear there? Well, it was. Uh, you know, this is going to sound like complete <clears throat> um, strangeness, but but <clears throat> I was. I'm losing my voice. 
I was um, without question in a bit of a space where it was, you know, probably doing the whole not breathing thing. And you came out of there and it was, you know, you, you're in the, in the zone. Mm. No question in the zone. Yeah. Come out of there and, uh, and slammed it straight into first gear. And you and sort of like, ah, oh, shit, back into, back into second, back into third. And, you know, ah, oh, you, you know, you've blown it. You just think of yourself blown it. But fortunately, you know, the run from the dipper to the next breaking point is, is pretty small. So, yeah. um, and then the rest of it was, was, you know, I think I probably tried harder to make, make up for it. to make up for it, which fortunately I did. Yeah. But I mean, it could have that that could have a spat you in the wall, <laughs> or b sent valves flying all the way down yeah. down the road. You know, there's so many different. And it was nine. It was nine. It actually, I think because I, I I as I did it, I managed because I think I dipped the clutch. Yeah. So my foot was on the clutch. So I think I, as soon as I did, I dipped the clutch again. So it was I think it was nine grand or nine two. Yeah. That it that it revved to, and um, you know we didn't change that engine stayed in the car for the for the race. We didn't change the boys checked the valve clearance and everything, and off she went again. But um, yeah, you you definitely think that that's you know that's that's the end of it. But now when you when you finish the lap and then you come back down, that that must have been pretty cool because you well, just don't see that. Well, I think, you? but you I think that, I think that's the bit though, Mike. You know, that's that's the thing. If 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 that hadn't happened, would we be talking about it now? I don't know if we'd yeah. be talking about it as much. I, you well, know. It, it added to the it yeah, added it, to the whole. But the if whole that thing. if that hadn't happened and that and that 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 row of people, everyone came out like that and and did what they did. I don't think the reaction would have been as big. Well, I think that made it that made it for me. Yeah. yeah, without question, that that was the bit that if that hadn't happened for me, I don't think it would have been anywhere near as. That's it would have been amazing, but it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been what it what it is. Yeah. Cause Cause you spoke it. earlier, you know about. There's definitely respect between drivers' abilities, yeah, but for every, you know, to come out and acknowledge another driver on the doesn't spot, happen, you doesn't know, happen. just no. it, you know, yeah. Yeah. doesn't happen. I mean, um, you know, and it, and it probably should a bit more often these days when people do things. But um, I think we've we've grown even more cynical, maybe potentially <laughs> yeah. about it. But but I yeah. think you're right, Caruso, in saying that it was just such an unexpected thing. And now it's all about the countdown to the next benchmark. When's yeah. someone going to do a yeah. two? But when's we, this going to happen? Yeah. Where he's like, Scotty does an amazing lap. And yeah, it's almost and like there's people yeah. going, oh, I thought he was going to do it too. Like, and that's well, a shame, right? A second. Absolutely, yeah. you know. Oh, but, I agree. Yeah. I, I think I think benchmarks, breaking records and breaking, uh, making new moments is what, that's what the whole sport's been built on yeah. since bloody it began. Yeah. There's people doing things that were like, wow, how did that happen? You know, there's progression in all sorts of parts of our sport, as there is in all sports. But, but you know, I, I man, I get shivers on the back of my spine when people do things that I, I look at and yeah. go, oh, Especially is, when you know that how cool. hard it is, how yeah. much you've got to stretch yourself. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good your car's handling, you, you're stretching yourself to do it. Like you, you're But working. finding, just yeah. finding something that, you know, um, you know, no one thought was there. It's, it's just it's, those are the moments that are just uh, for me these days. I, I really get a lot out of that. Yeah, I personally yeah. go, yeah, you know, respect, massive, massive respect. Oh, you want to see that stuff happening. You want to see people do things that that um, you know that everyone else looks up to and maybe is pissed off about at the time, but go, geez, that was good. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. doing it in the shootout makes it as well because if you do it in a practice session or something where but like, I, you, you but talked about the practice, eyes, though. if you, you do that in any oh, other track, sure. you pro everyone's like, oh yeah, that was good. Right? But yeah. but if you talk about the, having the eyes because that's, on you, that's, that's the, the pressure of a shootout. But you know, mm. and as an athlete, you have to deal with that pressure. That's a skill to yeah. be able to mm. soak yeah. that in. And, and, uh, the clips, Adelaide, Adelaide's one. Adelaide's yeah. a, Adelaide's a special yeah, Adelaide's lap. Good. That's a special special lap to to get pole because you know there's some commitment parts to that racetrack. Yeah. They deserve deserve plenty of respect as well. So. What made you so good at Pukakaui? What was it? <sighs> Home, you know, one round, one, you know, and it became championship too. But even before that, you know, when when I got the chance to go back in '96 and we went there and we did the the little sprint race format at, at Pukakaui that year. I mean, it was 130 something thousand people there. I mean, Amazing. it was it was just yeah. off yeah. off scale. And uh, and then Wellington, you know, the following year that was uh, following week, you know, those those two um, uh, we, um, weekends were incredible. And Wellington had the same vibe, mm -hmm. you know, as what Pukekohe because the fans were were treated, you know, and every year they get this one treat um, at Pukekohe 
you know, and it was at Hamilton. And Hamilton, as we know, didn't quite have the same yep. same feel, didn't have the same vibe. It was a bit real shame that it didn't, but it didn't work. It didn't it didn't do what Pukakoe does. Mm. And and um, so everyone, anyone that ever talks about, oh, you know, going somewhere else, I think I think well, why would you want to go somewhere else? Yeah. It, it went, I mean, we got we got a lot of Kiwi fans on the show, yeah. and they love it because they've been waiting for to have someone like yourself. They've been waiting for a Kiwi to come on, but they are super passionate. Of I mean, are. we are here in Australia, yeah, but they you guys love the best. It. you guys uh, you got to say that I mean. Per capita, we we're we're mental over yeah. there for motorsport. Oh, incredible! Yeah, absolutely incredible. And it, and it still does, it still blows me away on a regular basis yeah. how how passionate um, and crazy fans our, our Kiwi fans are for yeah. the sport and also obviously and we, like you said we only go there once a year and yeah. that's why I think you know I yeah how do you explain it? There's, there'll be some sort of um, psychological bloody kind of explanation potentially or something. I don't, I'm not sure, but but turning up there, you know I. I I was just so excited about the opportunity to race in front of a home crowd, have our, have a round of the V8 Supercars or Supercars Championship, and in, in you know mm. in our in our backyard and winning it for your country, isn't it? Really? Yeah. That's well, yeah, but it is. It's winning it for all those people up there, and, yeah. and, and you know, well, yeah, got no idea, mate. I mean, there was years I wasn't any good there too. Remember? Yeah. So it's still got to have all the tools. Got to have all the right tools, and we we you know I had from 2001 to 2005 I had some pretty good tools to play with yeah. that I was really comfortable with, and they happened to all be built by the cars all happened to be built by the same factory, which was TWR at the time. So, you know, after that things didn't go so good. Yeah. Well, Murph, thanks for coming in today, mate. We will let you go. You, you know, I've been s- absolutely amped. No, it has to it's, come in. It's been brilliant. It's been good. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Dave couldn't hang around for a little bit. No, longer. I'm not. You know, he I'm not. To, he's off getting baked by Barry Ryan. <laughs> I'm, not right picking, now. I'm not. I'm not sorry because tomorrow when we get to the track, we're going to be. So, how did that go, DR? Yeah, just uh, a little bit uh, sore there, I would imagine. Clip yeah. around the ears, probably. Yeah, mm. maybe. Maybe Yulden will have to. Uh, Luke might have to qualify the Do car. The main, he might be drive. the main driver for the weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks again, Murph. It's, Thanks, uh, it's been great to have you on, and um, you're welcome back on anytime you want. Uh, next week. <laughs> Perfect. <Yeah>. No worries. <laughs> I think it's been really good. <laughs>